What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS4 video. So, we have a 6.72 jailbreak that was just released. However, there is a big caveat. It is an unstable release. So I'm not really doing a full tutorial on the jailbreak in this video because I really don't think it's a wise idea to encourage people to actually update to this firmware and use this jailbreak right now because it is so unstable. It could potentially cause problems with your PS4. So it's a really, you know, like potential, not, not really with the PS4 necessarily, but it could cause problems with your hard drive and corruption and stuff like that. So I really would not suggest doing this. This is more just a proof of concept to show you that this exploit is real and that it works. And I will be doing a full tutorial once the full stable version of the exploit is released. You know, a version that doesn't crash all the time like this one does and cause problems. So yeah, I really, really wouldn't recommend using this jailbreak right now. Wait until the stable version comes out. I'll have a full tutorial once the stable version is out. But I thought it would be interesting just to take a look at this unstable version that's released just to see, um, you know, what it's like. It's a new jailbreak. It's interesting. So yeah, let's have a look at this. So I have updated this PS4 to 6.72. So as you can see right here, we are on 6.72 right now. So first of all, I'll show you how to update to 6.72 if you're going to do this anyway, despite my warnings. So yeah, if you're on a firmware that's lower than 6.72, then you can update your firmware version to 6.72 to try and do the jailbreak. So in order to do that, the first thing you're gonna to want to do is make sure you have automatic downloads all unchecked, all of these boxes unchecked and automatic downloads. And then also you should then back out to your network settings um, and make sure that you have the internet connection disabled so that when you update from the USB drive, it's not going to attempt to grab the latest update from Sony servers if you're disconnected from the internet. Um, and if you're on a previous jailbreak like 5.05, .05, then you might have the update blocker installed. So you'll have to uninstall that first. So if you go into the internet browser and you head over to your actual, uh, the original exploit host, which is 65.227.83.145. That'll take you to Al Azov's website or WebKit host. And then from there, you're gonna go into PS4 and you should have the update blocker somewhere in here, kernel. Yeah, so you've got enable updates and disable updates. So if, you're, if you run into any errors when you're trying to actually uh, install the uh, 6.72 update from the USB drive and it's giving you errors, it's probably because you have the update blocker installed on 5.05 .05, and you have to go in here and uh, check the enable updates option on 5.05 .05, and that will allow you to do the update off the USB drive. So that should only apply to people who are on a previous jailbreak like 5.05 .05 or 4.55 or something like that. Obviously, if you're not on a previous jailbreak, you don't need to worry about that step. So then we're gonna head over to the computer so in order to download the 6.72 firmware version, you're gonna head over to your computer and go to sce.party. Download links for everything you need will be in the description. And then we're gonna to go to the firmware section and the system section, and we're gonna select 6.72. And then you're gonna go ahead and click the download button to start downloading that firmware. It will take you to a mega.nz link, and then you're just gonna click download and it will start downloading that firmware version to your computer. Now, alternatively, let's say if that link's not available, there's another site you can go to uh, right here, which I'll also put in the description. Same thing goes with this one. You just head to the official firmwares, you scroll over to the end, and then, or not quite to the end, you scroll over until you find 6.72 right here, click it, and it will take you to a download link to start downloading the firmware version. So two places you can go there to download the update file. So the next thing we need to do is copy that file to a USB drive. So you're gonna plug in a USB drive into your computer. So as you can see, I've got one right here and you're gonna to want to make sure that that USB drive is formatted in XFAT format. So if you right click and you go to properties, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the file system is either XFAT or FAT32 format. So as you can see, mine is XFAT. If yours is something like NTFS, then you're gonna to have to reformat it. So you're gonna to have to right click and format the drive and make sure you change the file system to either XFAT or FAT32. Click start and that will reformat your USB drive in the correct file format. And that will erase any data that's currently on the drive. So make sure you back up any data on your USB drive before formatting it. So now you're gonna go into that USB drive 
and you're going to create a folder in the root of the USB drive. And that folder is going to be called PS4, PS4 in uppercase characters. And then inside that folder, you're going to create another folder called update, also in uppercase characters. And then in that folder, you're going to copy the update file into that folder. Okay, and once you have it copied over, make sure it's called ps4update.pup. So that is the name in uppercase characters, ps4update.pup. If the file you downloaded has a different name, make sure you rename it to ps4update.pup and then you should be good to go. This is the file structure again. You've got the root of your USB drive and then you've got PS4 and then update and uppercase characters. And then inside that folder, you have the update file called ps4update.pup. Everything has to be exactly like that. Otherwise the update will not show up on the PS4. So now that you've done that, you can go ahead and eject your USB drive and plug it into your PS4. Okay, so once you have your USB drive plugged back into your PS4, you're gonna head into the settings menu and scroll down until you find system software update and select that option. And then it should find the 6.72 update on your USB drive. Again, make sure the internet is turned off because otherwise if it finds a newer version online on the internet on PSN, it's going to select that version, which is gonna be the latest firmware version. So that is why you want to make sure that you turned off your internet before you did this because then it should only find the update that's on the USB drive, which is the 6.72 update. So if it says version 6.72, then you know it's the update on the USB and you can go ahead and say next and update and start doing the system update, as simple as that. So this will take a while. It'll probably restart your PS4 a couple of times. So just give it time to finish. And once you're back on the PS4 home screen, we can continue. So what we're going to do here is if we head over to the internet browser and have a look at trying to actually get this jailbreak running. So as far as I'm aware, Alizev has not updated his exploit page just yet with the exploit, but I'm sure he will. His, his uh, exploit page will have the 6.72 unstable jailbreak uh, soon. However, right now it's not currently available. So I'm going to go ahead and use Lightning Mods version instead. So if we head over to this website, ps4exploits.darksoftware.xyz and we head over there, you can see we have 6.72. If we go there, we've got the unstable version of 6.72, which is the only version available. So if we run this here, as you can see, there's plenty of warnings about issues with it and it causing crashes. So the first thing you do is you hit the jailbreak button. And like I say, this is a very unstable jailbreak. It only works once out of every 10 tries, basically. So I could be here a while. So anyway, let's try this. So we hit jailbreak and let's see what happens. Not enough free system memory. Not enough free system memory. It's meant to come up with a message, but I'm not getting any messages. So anyway, let's just reboot the system and try again. Okay, so I've been attempting this for a while and it's not working. I've tried over 10 times and still nothing using Lightning Mods host on uh, Dark Software. I'm not seeing there's anything wrong with it potentially. It could just be, you know, my internet connection or something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to host it myself on a local server and see if I get any better luck with that instead. So if I head over to my computer here and I guess I'll make this kind of like a tutorial here, but Obviously, I still wouldn't recommend doing this because it's an unstable version. You could damage the hard drive, corrupt your hard drive or something. So, you know, don't do this. But if you don't care, you're going to follow it anyway, then fine. I can't stop you. So anyway, I'm going to download Node.js, the latest version, and install it. And then to install the HTTP server, once Node.js is installed, you just uh, open up a command window and you type in npm install http-server dash g for global and that will install the node.js http server once it's installed you can then run the server so what i'm going to do is then download the uh, unstable exploit so you go here code download it as a zip file and then once you have the zip file downloaded just extract it to your computer and then you can host this on your local web server by going into the directory copying the file path and then all you have to do is open up another command window, command prompt, and then type in http-server space, and then paste in the file path. Make sure you put it in double quotes if there's any spaces in the file name. 
and hit enter and that should start hosting the uh, exploit on a local server that you can then access on your PS4. So we might get some better luck with this exploit here. So if we go on to the internet browser again and then go to that actual IP address, so HTTP colon double slash. So if we go to 192.168.137.1 colon 8080, for me, that should take me to the local version. There we go. And then we'll try this and see if we get any better luck here. So let's try uh, JB for jailbreak. I hate how those buttons are so close together. It's hard to hit the right one. Okay, this is taking longer. Okay, jail okay, good. We're actually getting somewhere though. At least it's giving up giving me the proper messages and it's not just redirecting me like it was with the dark software one. So that's good at least. Uh, fail to jailbreak, reboot your PS4. So I'm pretty sure it said keep the message open and then just reboot your PS4 from the power button. So I'll reboot and try again. We're getting somewhere though. Is this the eighth attempt now or the ninth attempt? I honestly, I'm starting to lose track. I think it's the eighth attempt. So here we go. Activate jailbreak. Wait for 20 seconds-ish. Probably less than that, to be honest. There we go, you're all set. Click okay, wait. Not enough free system memory. Okay, worked twice in a row there. That's interesting. Now let's run Mira and do the same thing. Waiting for clients. So far, so good. You're all set, okay. Wait for not enough free system memory. Okay, there we go. Can I back out here? Oh my God, okay. This is it, it's working. Quickly, before it crashes. <laughs> Debug settings are enabled, there we go. Finally, okay, that was eight attempts it took me to get that running do not this this is not worth it i mean it's amazing but if especially if you're on a older jailbreak if you're on 5.05 this is completely not worth it right now because the jailbreak that you're currently on is way better way more stable just stay there wait for this jailbreak to become more stable wait for a full stable release and then then it'll be great then you can update to it um I guess if you are on like 5.55 or 6.20, if you're on some firmware that's not jailbreakable, but it's under 6.72, then sure, you can give it a go. You might as well. But then again, apparently this jailbreak can cause potential issues with the hard drive, like corruption and stuff. So maybe not do it right now. But uh, there's proof of concept anyway. It does work. If for anybody who doubted that there would be a 6.72 jailbreak because it was taking a while, the proof is right here. You can see it's working. We have the debug settings enabled. And um, let's see, can we actually run a fake package game? I doubt we can. I'd probably have to reinstall one in order to see it actually work. But let me just try and start Fallout 4. Uh, this is a fake package game, Fallout 4, I have installed right here. And it does run. There you go. So Hen is running. The homebrew enabler that's built into Mira is indeed running. That game was padlocked before. You could not run it um, without uh, exploit, without Hen running. But as you can see, the game is indeed running right there. So yeah, it is working. We have a full jailbreak on 6.72. However, again, it's very unstable. It took me eight attempts to get it running. So 
honestly, I would not suggest uh, using this right now. Definitely, it can cause potential hard drive problems as well. So definitely just uh, stay on 5.05 or wait for the stable release. Once the stable release does come out, I will make a full tutorial showing you how to install it properly. Uh, yeah, it's really impressive though that we actually have something working. And if you want to take the risk, then... You know, if you don't really have anything on your hard drive, you don't mind if you have to rebuild the hard drive database or something and you lose all the package files and games and apps and save data that's currently on your hard drive if anything goes wrong. If that's okay for you, uh, if you've just got a new PS4, it doesn't really have anything on the hard drive anyway, then sure, whatever, you can you can do this if you want. But, you know, wait. For, I would highly recommend waiting for the stable release. So... Yeah, also these homebrew apps and stuff, most homebrew apps will have to be updated to support 6.72. Apparently the homebrew apps that are made with Mira will automatically work. So that's one of the things I was saying in the, the Mira video about Mira is that it will be good for you know people making homebrew stuff. If a new exploit comes out, then most of that should just carry over and work on the new exploit automatically. Uh, although some stuff won't work uh, depending on what it is. Whereas these homebrew apps are not made using Mira, as far as I'm aware. Therefore, uh, they'll have to have a new version out for them to work properly. You know, I could run them, but they could cause issues uh, if they're not updated to uh, 6.72. So don't run any of your 5.05 .05 homebrew apps on uh, 6.72 right now. Wait for them to get a 6.72 update. Uh, but you can run fake package games and stuff on 6.72. They should work. And uh, yeah, so that's it. So pretty impressive. So pretty impressive. We do have a 6.72 exploit and uh, you can run it right now if you want to take the risk. But there are some risks involved and it does take a long time to get working unless you're lucky and you get it working first try. Um, but um, other times it's going to take you multiple attempts. Uh, with your PS4 crashing and going into safe mode and having to wait for it to finish going out of safe mode and going back, booting back up again and then trying again. I honestly don't think it's worth it right now, but um, you know, you can make your own mind up on that. There will be a stable version coming out at some point in the near future. So stay tuned for that. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.